This is Environmental Science 2, Chapter 10, Part 2 on Biodiversity. In this portion of the video lecture, we will be discussing public policies that help protect biodiversity. Developed countries, of course, have the most laws and, and regulations on uh, wildlife, and the United States, no doubt, holds one of the stronger policies on um, laws and regulations to help preserve species to prevent extinction. One of those policies is the Endangered Species Act. Uh, this was passed in 1973, and this act is designed to protect any organism uh, from becoming extinct. So how does an animal come on the endangered species list? Well, their numbers have to be so low that it is very likely that they will become extinct in the very near future if nothing is done today. Um, some animals that are on the endangered species list, um, the panda, um, as far as being an endangered species, these are of course our wild animals, so they do not necessarily count uh, animals that are a part of the zoo or wildlife preserve population. Uh, the Ridley sea turtle is uh, the organism there in the middle. Uh, the Ridley's uh, sea turtle numbers uh, are more likely, more than likely under 500 at this point. Um, and then the cat that you see there on the very uh, far right, um, that is uh, a type of mountain lion um, that lives uh, in areas of uh, Nepal and India that is becoming uh, population is becoming very, very low. Threatened species, um, these are the species that if, uh, if they are not protected, then they will most likely become an endangered species. Uh, so the poison arrow frog uh, in uh, tropical rainforests. Um, poison arrow frog is actually undergoing research for different, um, the different uh, toxins in the poison that can actually um, or at least is, is thought to um, perhaps deal with uh, neuromuscular functions. Um, so people with, for example, Parkinson's disease that have that kind of uncontrollable shaking, perhaps um, the poison from the poison, uh, poison arrow frog could be uh, used in a, in a medication to prevent that uh, muscle twitching. Um, the... Uh, Many species uh, are uh, surveyed, um, so population ecologists will go out uh, into animal populations and try to estimate the numbers. So it's really the, the numbers that are um, the deciding factor on whether an animal or plant species is either threatened or if it's endangered. So for the Endangered Species Act, uh, there's a couple of uh, steps that need to be done. First, uh, a list uh, of endangered and threatened species need to be made so we know uh, who, who, is, uh, who is on the list. Uh, the second provision, uh, once those species are on the list, those species cannot be caught, uh, killed, or in the case of plants, uprooted. Um, and species or any parts of them may not be sold. This is usually the provision that is very difficult uh, to carry out in uh, other countries, especially developing countries. Uh, the third provision is the government cannot carry out a project uh, that knowingly jeopardizes species on the list. Uh, in the 1980s, uh, in the logging industry in the Pacific Northwest, um, we have the spotted owl, which is an endangered species um, that was uh, housed. Many uh, of these spotted owls were uh, housed in a particular section of forest that was to be taken down for development. Um, there was uh, a very uh, long and long and drawn out process of trying to um, kind of get the loggers to get in there to do their job, but without trying to harm the spotted owl. The last provision on the list is that uh, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh, if it's on the list, we have to figure out how we're going to get those animals or plants off the list. So there has to be a recovery plan. There has to be uh, an action uh, taken 
in order to increase those numbers. There are also many international organizations um, in place as well to protect species. Of course, the World Wildlife Fund, uh, Nature Conservancy is another one, um, Greenpeace uh, also uh, besides environmental issues um, as far as pollution and those types of things, they also take a look at endangered and threatened species as well. Um, and the International Union of Nature and Natural Resources, uh, the Conservation Union. Um, they are uh, kind of the, the top international organization um, for identifying those animals or plants that are on the endangered species list. Obviously, what needs to be done as far as the illegal side of things is preventing poaching or that illegal hunting. Uh, the Convention of International Trade in Endangered Species, also known as CITES, um, they are known for specifically dealing with poaching. Um, the uh, ivory trade, for example. Ivory is banned um, as a substance to legally trade uh, because, of course, the ivory is taken from the tusks of uh, African elephants. Uh, African elephants are on the threatened list, uh, but they are still protected under that Endangered Species Act. We can take a look at treaties that have been developed to protect biodiversity. Uh, the United Nations had a conference uh, on environment and development. They called it Earth Summit. Um, it happened in uh, the early 90s, and we developed the 1992 Biodiversity Treaty. Now remember, like with any international agreement, it's very hard to police those agreements. It's more of a, an international understanding um, that richer countries will give money to poorer countries to help protect their species. Uh, for example, the United States uh, does give money to places in India and China and Africa to help police uh, the illegal poaching uh, and the illegal trade of um, ivory and um, furs and those types of things from animals that are on the endangered species list. This has been Environmental Science 2, Chapter 10, Part 2 on Biodiversity.